you might be the only one hitting the shots, but you know, you have 11 other girls just right behind you. That's what makes it special, that you have everybody cheering for you. It's almost like you get more nervous because you, you don't want to let them down. When you play for yourself, it's, of course, you do your best, but that's it. But when you have all them right there together with caddies, it's like, you know, I, I just got to do it. It's, you got to just go really, really deep and somehow figure it out and, and get it done. When it comes to getting it done on the biggest stage, there aren't many players who understand what it takes more than Annika Sorenstam. Choosing the next European Solheim Cup captain became a simple task once she'd offered her services, and she'll be drawing on her experience of 10 major championship wins and playing in no fewer than eight Solheim Cups to lead her team. When I played in um, Solheim Cup in 1994 at the Greenbrier, I had lit, I mean, I was a rookie, literally, and uh, I was extremely nervous. I mean, my teammates were players that I have read about, seen on TV, and you know, for me to just be included was, you know, was a big deal. Uh, but then also to play against, you know, the USA, players that I've never really seen, players that I, you know, just watched again from far. I was, I remember I was so nervous. I was playing against Tammy Green at the, at the time, it was single matches, and, and somebody said I lo literally looked green in my face. And they said, don't forget to breathe. I just stood there. I didn't really know what to expect. By the 1996 Solheim Cup, Soren Stam was Europe's leading player. Despite winning four out of a possible five points, she was powerless to stop the US team overturning a two-point deficit during the final day's singles. I mean, I look back at 96, and I, uh, I mean, all we can do is, is do our best. I remember playing good golf. I mean, that's what I remember. But it just shows you what match play is all about. It's, you know, it's never over until it's over. You have to keep fighting and, and also that every point matters. It, you know, it doesn't matter what you've done the first two days and there's still more points out there and you just gotta keep on going. I remember walking away thinking, you know, what could we have done differently? And we probably gave a few away because we maybe took a, thing, a few things for granted. Despite her continued success in individual tournaments, Annika would have to wait to get her hands on the Solheim Cup. A third successive defeat followed at Muirfield Village in 1998, before the matches headed to Scotland two years later. I felt like at Loch Lomond so many things were lining up. You know, they always say the stars were lined up. They really were. I felt like we had a good team spirit, you know, we kept fighting and we, you know, even when we were 4-0, we never let go of the, the gas pedal. I remember we just keep pushing and pushing and there were a lot of delays, it was, it was a lot of interruptions, it was early mornings because of delays and so forth, that it, it was really a tough few days, but I remember uh, coming down to the stretch and, and I mean, we looked at the, at the clock and we knew that the sun was going to go down and we had the momentum on our side and how can we finish, how can we let the last three groups kind of speed up and get ready and somehow, I'll never forget, we looked up in the sky and there was this opening of in the clouds and the sun peeked through so we got a few more minutes of daylight and Karen Koch was, you know, in one of the matches that was really crucial and, um, you know, the putt that she made there in the end, it was just spectacular and, yeah, it was just, the feeling was just incredible. After losing the 2002 edition, a European team led by fellow Swede Katrin Nilsmark had the chance to win back the trophy on home soil. I would say 2003 was probably one of my highlights when it comes to Soham Cup, uh, just because maybe because it was in Sweden, to be able to showcase for the Swedish fans and Swedish family, you know, what, what my game was all about was put a little bit extra uh, on it and we had a beautiful few days down in, uh, in Barstebeck and of course was sitting up beautifully and I mean I remember I played very very well again we had a good team and you can feel the energy early on and um, had some fun matches together with Suzanne Pedersen coming down the stretch some other highlights and the, and the best ball we turned a match around and and she was newer on the scene and I'd been around for a little while and so we, we bonded really well and we complemented each other well. I mean, she's a little bit more fiery than I am as far as a personality, 
a little different game, a little bit more, she's more aggressive, I'm probably a little bit more of a strategist. Together, we just, it was a great combination. With Europe leading eight and a half, six and a half, the Scandinavians were one down with two to play in their four balls match, but managed to win and give Europe vital momentum for the final day. It was so incredible. Somehow, like I said, when you play as a team, you you hit shots that you might never hit before. You you hit a chip shot that you didn't think you could do, or you make a putt. You're like, well, how? You know, wasn't I nervous? How did how did I have the feel for that putt? You just do things you've never done before, and you know, I think Suzanne and I, we somehow I respect her for, for who she is, and she respects me for who I am, and. And it was just a good combination, even though, you know, we didn't maybe start out as well as we wanted, but we fought. And I think that is, is equally as important for future matches, knowing, you know, that we didn't give up. You know, we just believed in ourselves. And, and like you said, the putt on 17, I mean, I don't know what the odds are to making it, but you get one chance and you, you know, make it in front of the crowd. And I mean, I jumped high and I remember people of the crowd just jumped and cheered. And then all of a sudden, they, you know, they, they darted to the 18th tee to be there for the next. And so the support was just tremendous. And again, it just felt like you were almost floating over the fairways because it was, it was so electrifying. It was one of the cool, cool moments in my career when, you know, you look back and that's one of them.